Hey, my name is Cartier, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this spray paint can using Blender and Photoshop. This is part two of a three part series where I'll be showing you how to model, texture, and render from scratch. In this video, we're going to be texturing the base mesh that we made in the last video. If you missed the last video, click here. Now, without further ado, this is Blender, Blender, Blender Basics. Basics. Okay, so this is where we left off in the last video with the entire mesh modeled. So now it's time to go in and add all the colors and designs. In order to see the changes while texturing, we need to be in material view. To do that, click Z and then go down to material preview. And then I'm gonna select the object, right click, and then set origin to 3D cursor. Now that that's done, I'm gonna select the can and then click tab to go into edit mode. And then we're gonna add materials from the bottom up. To do this, click A to select all, and then we're gonna go over to the materials tab right here. And then we're gonna name this one metal rim. Go down to the base color and turn this down just a little bit, and then turn up the metallic value and turn down the roughness. Okay, now if we tab out of edit mode, you'll see that the entire can has been assigned to that material. Now, tab back into edit mode and then choose the face select mode. I'm gonna left click off of the object to deselect all the faces and then go to the top most face and left click. Now, with your numpad, we're gonna click control plus and continue to click control plus until we've selected everything but the bottom layer. Now, if we click this plus button on the materials tab and then click new material, we can assign our paper material which is where we're going to be putting our design. Now click assign and it should assign this material to the rest of the can. I'm not going to touch this material right now, but we'll come back to it in a second when we're ready to add the design. Now with control numpad minus, deselect all of our paper faces and then we're going to reassign the metal rim. To do this, left click the metal rim and then click assign. Now again, we're going to click control numpad minus until the entire rim is deselected. Make sure to deselect this gap as well. And then we're gonna click the plus button, new material, and I'm gonna name this top. Click assign. And then I'm gonna bring this base color down just a little bit and bring the roughness up just a little bit. Now, again, with control minus, we're gonna deselect these faces and then reassign the metal rim. If you've accidentally selected too many faces and try to assign the next material, you'll get this weird rim on the outside. To fix this, click Control Z and then Control minus and then assign the material again and it should pop up in the right space. Now for our final material, we're gonna click Control numpad minus, numpad minus, and then on the materials tab, click plus, new, and then I'm gonna call it cap. Let's bring this down to a black and then turn up the roughness. I'm gonna turn up the metallic just a little bit and then click assign. Again, if you have this problem, no worries. Click control Z, control minus, and then reassign. Now, if we tab out of edit mode, we'll see all the materials on the can have been applied, except for this tip. To fix the tip, I'm gonna tab back into edit mode, left click one of the panels on the tip, and then click control L. This selects all of the linked faces. Now click plus, new material, and then I'm gonna change the base color to red. And then click assign. Tab out, and all of our colors are finished. Now, in order to add 2D images as textures, we have to do an operation called UV mapping. This basically means that we're gonna unfold the 3D shape so that it's broken down into 2D panels. In order to do this step, we're gonna need to open up a new window. To do this, go to the top left corner until you get this cursor and then left click and drag to the middle of your screen. Go up to the editor type, left click and go to UV editor. Now in our viewport, we're gonna left click our object, tab into edit mode. And then if you click A, 
you'll see all of the faces of our can in a flat 2D view on the left hand side. For this video, all we have to map is everything with the paper material, which are these rectangles up top. So in the viewport, we need to select only the paper faces. To do this, you can click the negative Y gimbal or one on your numpad. This will put us in flat view and then click Alt Z to turn on X-ray mode. And then we're gonna left click and drag to select all of the paper faces. Now with all of our paper faces selected, we're gonna need to separate the front graphic from the back graphic of the can. To do this, click U, and then we're gonna go down to project from view. Now we have the entire can projected straight up and down, but this includes the front and back of the can. To separate the two, I'm gonna click A while in the UV editor, use S to scale up, and then with G, I'm gonna move the can over to the left side. And then now back in our viewport, I'm gonna click Alt Z again to turn off X-ray mode, and then left click and drag to select all the faces again. But this time we're only selecting the front faces. So we can go over to our UV editor again, click A, G, X, and then move these over on the X axis. But now if we click Alt Z and then select again, you'll see that we have both sides of the can, front on the right and back on the left. This will make it a lot easier. This will make it a lot easier to create the graphics in Photoshop. Now, before we go design the can graphics, we're going to want to take this reference image into whatever software we're using to design. To do this, click UV, export UV layout, and then put the file name as UV reference. Make sure that all UVs and modified are both unchecked and then click export UV layout. Now in Photoshop, I'm going to create a new file change this to 1024 by 1024, create, and then I can import my reference image and click done. Now I left click the UV reference, turn down to the opacity to about 40 to 50% and then lock the layer. Now I just add a new layer under it and then add my designs. I'll also provide a download link for the design that I made, just in case you're only focused on learning Blender. However, I do recommend learning a 2D design software because it'll greatly aid your 3D design process. If Photoshop is too expensive or you're not ready to dedicate money towards it right now, GIMP is a great free alternative and I would highly recommend it to beginners. Once you finish your design, come back into Blender, select the paper material, and then click this yellow dot next to base color. Then go to texture, image texture, left click, and then navigate to the design that you made. Click open image. If you tab out of edit mode, your design should be perfectly laid out on the can. If you have any issues or it doesn't come out looking exactly like you want it, you can come up to this drop down in the UV editor, left click, select the image that you made, and then you can make adjustments by left clicking one of the points on the UV map, clicking control L, and then using S to scale, and G to move, you can change how your design looks on the can. Now that's pretty much it. You now know the basics of texturing in Blender. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you came across any problems, feel free to drop a comment below or shoot me a DM at Cartier on Instagram. I'm always responding to comments and DMs because my goal is to help you. The third and final part of this video will be releasing Thursday. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing as any engagement helps me make what I love to make and share my knowledge with you. And if you didn't like the video or came across any problems, please don't hesitate to reach out. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on Thursday.